Welcome to our review of Truth or Dare, distributed by Universal Studios. Do you think I should post a review from a Universal Studios movie, John? Truth or Dare? Dare. I dare you to post a review using Universal Studios footage and then get demonetized. That's a risk. <laughs> it is. It is a risk nowadays. And the truth is it will get demonetized. It it's probably will. Over time. I'm, I'm actually hoping it does so I can screenshot it and post it on Twitter in like a day. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't miss about anything! Not once, not one time! Truth or Dare is directed by Jeff Wadlow, the man behind uh, International Assassin movie, Kevin James thing, yeah. wh whatever it was called. And Kick-Ass 2. And Kick-Ass yeah. 2, which is interesting. Uh, and he's now made a Blumhouse horror film based around the game Truth or Dare. And in this film, it's haunted, and it's life or death. You can die in the middle of the game and never come back. If you break the rules, you die. If you don't answer the questions... For truth, you die. If you don't succeed in your dare and you chicken out, you die. And you get taken over by this hilarious derpy grin that haunts this movie and is a curse to all of us. Everyone in this film at some point does their best impression of Willem Dafoe. <laughs> the Green Goblin. <laughs> and, and like you said, along the way, they just make up the rules as they go. Yeah. Two truths and then one dare. You can't do more than three or four. It's... It, it, I don't think the people writing the script knew what they wanted to do, so they just had a crayon and they just filled in the, the blank spaces along the way. So John and I saw this film tonight, and I think we instantly had a reaction to it that was kind of unprecedented when it comes to horror films that we haven't really experienced since last year. Yeah, well, the first reaction was I wanted to regurgitate the Sour Patch Kids <laughs> I was eating, but yeah, this is the best worst movie we've reviewed together since Bye Bye Man. Without a doubt. Why is it every time we get together we just talk about <laughs> shitty movies? Why I does this have to happen? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I've never I've never done a new release as a hilariosity before. Fuck it. This movie is shit, but it's fucking awesome. I laugh my ass off the whole time. This movie, I don't know how intentional it was to be funny, and if it wasn't intentional, that's what makes it so great. I hope it was accidental because it makes that it makes it that much better. So it opens with a Snapchat opening titles, which apparently, I was looking into the, the filmmaking process, uh, the actors actually Snapchatted and, and that's what became the opening title sequence. All these friends are on a spring break uh, tour of Mexico and they of course go to a bar, listen to some really shitty dubstep, and then they get stuck in a church somewhere with, with some random guy who wants to play truth or dare with them, who basically gets them stuck in this ring of death where they all have to go from person to person playing truth or dare and it goes in, a, in order just like Ouija and all of these films that revolve around some game that a bunch of kids are playing which by the way they're like 32 the, trying to be college kids. Yeah. 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 This reminded me of the modern day equivalent to Final Destination. Except Final Destination was entertaining because people would get roller coaster accidents and trucks would explode and logs would fly into their... In this movie, they just play truth or dare. Yeah. And then they make stupid faces and people die. That, that is... <laughs> that's, that's it. That's the summary to this movie. It's it. And I gotta be honest, I loved it. Like, I... Okay, it's... The quality of this film... No. But this is like a Bye Bye Man to me, or uh, any of those like Sleepwalkers, the Stephen King Sleepwalkers, yeah. any of these horror films that I could watch again. Like, I might actually buy this and watch it again at a party with friends. Really? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't like it. Okay? I don't think I could watch it again. I, I really it, don't. In the right position. If you dared right... me, I could watch it again. That would be a tough dare. Yeah. yeah. That would be a tough dare. I hate films that rely on modern day social media references movies based on facebook or instagram or it just feels like this movie will be dated in six months like friend requests yeah it's just it really that's what i hate and everyone in this movie did you hate everyone every single character <sighs> there was not one character that i even remotely gave a shit about no they they were emotionally inept they didn't care about each other their best friends and boyfriends would die, and then six seconds later, they were just like, well, that happened, let's go get coffee or something. It was incredible. <laughs> like, I, I was trying not to be an asshole in the theater, because yeah. there were a few other people. No, you weren't. 
<laughs> I was laughing. We were laughing at little girls. I know. <laughs> I was trying so hard to stifle it, though, because I hate being that guy. Because what if someone there was actually really liking it? Well, then fuck them. They need, <laughs> they need to know the truth. They need to know the truth. <laughs> It's true though. I mean, there were so many scenes I was just dying inside, and I was just like, <laughs> it's trying so hard not to laugh. Okay, so in the trailer, uh, a death that that's shown in the trailer, and okay, we're gonna get into some spoilers. If you've ever seen any of my hilariosity reviews, they are reviews of movies that I find hilariously bad, and I always get into spoilers. And so we're gonna talk about spoilers with truth or dare. This is in the trailer though. We get this kid who's just like the asshole of the movie. He always wants to fuck anything that moves. He gets dared at a bar to show his penis. Yeah. That's part of the game. And he gets up and he's like, I'm going to show you my business. And he gets <laughs> on top of a pool table and he chickens out. Yeah, he does. And so because he chickens out, the game kills him. How does he How does he die? He, he, he slips and basically smashes his head into another table. You die. So after that, all of his friends get a text of this video of, of, of their associate, not really friend, he was sort of like an asshole to them, but they knew him dying. The one kid watches it, and then like two minutes later, he just starts watching it again, and he's just like, hmm, yeah, I'm going to watch my friend die. Like it was a cat playing the piano or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's okay. And that's the thing about this movie, throughout the entire movie, every time someone dies... No one cares. No. Nothing matters. There's no there's no consequences. By the end of the movie, you come to the conclusion that you don't like anyone in this movie, and you want them all to die. Yeah, and it's almost like the, the writers were kind of banking on that. Like, we want everyone to not give a shit about any of these people because they're just expendable kids for, for something to kill. And, and the other thing about this film that I just can't stand, again... I thought it was funny, okay? It was entertaining in, sure. in, in a stupid way. But, like, I could not stand how obvious all of the cliches were. Like, now we're going to have the Google research scene where they learn about the past history of whatever this entity is. This has to be the research scene where something... Like, in Bye Bye Man, she goes to a library and the librarian mm -hmm. gets, like, momentarily possessed or something. And, and, then, and, and then, they go to a library in this movie yeah. and she almost gets possessed by... And that's the other thing. There's no true antagonist in this film. It's just the idea, the concept. I needed an entity. I needed something... Yeah. They, they they bring up some sort of demon named Calix. Calix, yeah, that's right. And, and and it's he's in the movie for like five minutes, and at the very end, just reference though. Yeah, you know you don't yeah, see anything. Yeah. He just it's just a person makes that stupid fucking face. I guess they thought that was very frightening, but to me, every single time it happened without fail, I laughed my ass off. Truth. That's not how this works. Only the game decides. It was out of place, and it was comical. It was That's the best way to describe it. It's, they're trying to be intentionally scary, but th every time they try their hardest, it's the funniest, most hilarious part of the entire movie. It is. Uh, and there's so many sequences that build to nothing. Where, like, for instance, the end. Apparently, she figures out how to win. And she tells her, her last friend, like... I, you have to pick Dare. And she's like, but if I pick Dare, it might say something crazy. She's like, no, you have to pick Dare. So she's like, fine. And she picks Dare. And the demon dares her to shoot uh, the protagonist. But she does. And, like, there's a jump scare noise. And because of that, she shoots her friend in the arm instead of, like, a mortal wound. There's never a conversation like, yeah, just shoot me in the arm if it wants me to shoot. If it wants you to shoot me. It just happens. And then... That gets scrapped, and they just restart it, and literally infect the entire fucking world. She puts out a YouTube video I incorporating anyone who watches it into the game. She put out an atom bomb to destroy everyone. And in the beginning of the movie, when they first play Truth or Dare in that abandoned church in Mexico, she gets asked the question, if aliens would come down here, and would you sacrifice all of us for everyone's life in Mexico? And she says, oh, I would sacrifice our lives. But by the end of the movie, she changed her tune a little bit. Yeah, she so, completely changes character. Yeah. She goes from, like, the good girl, the one person who's doing everything right that you're supposed to respect. And like you said, she says, I would rather kill all of my personal friends than the entire country of sure. Mexico. And then at the end of the movie, she puts out a YouTube video infecting the entire populace who watches it with the demon. Imagine if you could do such a thing. Putting out a YouTube video where you could just kill everyone if they watched it. <laughs> And speaking of the characters, like you said, they're all cliche. There's one character, 
She's the best friend of Olivia, the main character, and every time they have an argument or something bad happens, this happened three times throughout the movie, she gets angry and always storms out of the room. because it, they It's did, her whole character. They didn't know what to do with her character. And her character has this convoluted backstory with her father committing suicide, and her father at one point tried to like pull an American beauty with her best friend when he was drunk, and it's just... They force so many ideas down your throat, they do. but they don't know how to actually execute any of them to be believable. Once again, if you really break down this movie, the ending is based upon making a YouTube video to kill humanity. It is. That is that is what happens. How can you even go? Could could you even make a sequel to that? It's just it might even be kind of entertaining. Just Maybe see like, the entire world just a mm, let's post, play truth or dare. Like a post apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland, everyone's sitting in circles playing truth or dare. Yeah, I, every single person just walking around with that face. Like that'd be amazing. I could see that. I could. I'd watch it. Uh, that sounds even better. <laughs> it does. Make that Hollywood, please, right now. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and that backstory with the dad sort of comes to life at some point. <laughs> she's sitting. <laughs> she, she's time. sitting outside of a restaurant, looking at her phone, watching an old video of her dad. Who's she? He's like, oh, I'm making uh, some swordfish steak for you, honey. And all of a sudden, the dad in the phone just goes like, and just starts talking to her like in the phone. Yeah. And he's like, I have a gun. <laughs> You should go get that gun. And she's just crying like, Dad? <laughs> it was amazing. Oh it God. wasn't even necessary. I mean, they could no. have just cut that story out, saved 20 minutes of the movie, and just got to the point. And I don't think they even knew what the ending to the movie was going to be Clearly. when they were writing it. I bet money that there are like four to five alternate endings on the Blu-ray. At least. Yeah. At least. I feel like we got little tidbits of each one of those in the movie, but they couldn't quite commit to either idea. It did actually yeah. feel like that now that yeah. you mention it. It felt like multiple endings strung together mm -hmm. because if you watch like the final, I guess, confrontation that occurs in this church, it, it does not make sense. No. The character motivations for what occurs doesn't make sense. What we see happen doesn't make sense. Like they find out you're supposed to find the person who started it, cut out his tongue, say a chant seven times, and stick it in a pot. A jar. A jelly jar. <laughs> With a skull face on it. Ooh. And it's like, what? The kid starts cutting off his tongue. Yeah. And of course it's PG-13, so you can't really see any of that. But the kid dies before anything can happen. And then you're like, well, well, can they just pick up the tongue and put it in the jar? Or does he have to do it? The, the entire backstory to the demon doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing about the ending that works. No, nothing. Not one thing. And by the end of the movie, you, you give up. <laughs> you give up and you're just hoping something funny happens to redeem itself. <laughs> and and it, it does. Yeah. She makes a YouTube, YouTube video. video. She makes a YouTube video. And it's, it's great. She makes this YouTube video, okay? But you know what? The YouTube video gets a copyright strike. <laughs> By Universal Studios, it gets taken down. Oh, probably. So well. in in the end, Universal Studios saves, saves everyone, humanity. All right. Well, yeah. you know that's better. Good job, uh, Universal Zephyr. Well, the other thing is, when everyone's watching this YouTube video, there's like people in like England, China, across every continent with landmarks behind them. But you know, we both make YouTube videos, and I'm, the more I think about that, it's really intriguing because I think. If she was just some random girl that made a YouTube video, it would have like two views. Right. So really, it doesn't. Maybe. No. Maybe it doesn't matter. No, I, I mean, like, what what might happen if yeah. she makes the video, like, two people watch it. Yeah. And then something actually happens. And they spread it. And then they spread it. Yeah, like okay. the ring curse tape, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. So the same guy who watched the video of his friend die twice just to laugh at it, he really doesn't believe them. He's at a job interview, and people are texting him. His friends are like, "It's real. You have to believe me." What does he do? He sends them the poop emoji <laughs> as a reply. And this guy is going to college to be a doctor. Yes. He also had like a Patrick Bateman vibe a at bit. times. That's the vibe I was getting. Yeah, he seemed to not give a shit about anybody no. or any or anyone. He was a sociopath. He was. Yeah. He wrote prescriptions for people somehow. There's there's never any explanation for how he has like a prescription Pad. pamphlet and he's just like, yeah. here you go, here's a prescription yeah. for Vicodin or whatever, and they're just like, thanks. That's okay, it. I guess. And you have he has a pen that says doctor on it. Yeah. And then he goes into some random job interview and stabs himself in the <laughs> eye with a pen. And I'm like, you just sent the poop emoji. 
What are you doing? What is, what is this movie doing? It doesn't... It's not doing anything. It's just <gasps> making stupid faces. I love it, though. <laughs> yeah, the script definitely... It felt like a student film. It felt like a 18-year-old kid wrote this when he, he came home after a long night. It, it blows my mind that films like this get made. And on a serious note, I mean... It's depressing, if you really think about it. Kind of. And also, I'm so tired of the trend of PG-13 horror films that have no style, there's no substance. If this movie tried to be a good movie, that's fine. PG can work for that. Yeah, The Quiet Place is PG-13. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect example. And I'm just, I'm tired of it, Chris. Yeah. Stupid faces, stupid people, <laughs> stupid movies. Within the first ten minutes, man... There's, like, three... Someone's behind me. Jump scares. Yeah, the jump scares. Loud sounds. Like, Wes Craven made fun of that in Scream, yeah. guys, in 96. Someone's standing behind you going on your shoulder, and then you turn around. That's not scary. Yeah. It's never been scary. Ever. It did nothing, and it was almost distracting at times. But also, it added to the comedy aspect of it. It did. <laughs> there was a few times where someone was just walking to a room... Like, just casually walking into a room and they'd play the sound. Yeah. And, and then he would just say something and then leave. <laughs> Thanks, man. I loved, the funniest jump scare to me was um, one of the characters was in front of a vending machine. The candy wasn't falling. He's in a hospital because one of his friends, of course, is all fucked up and everyone's dying. And some old guy in a bed just, like, walks up, like, right behind him, grabs him and goes like, <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> and I was, that was the best. Like, that was my favorite part. Yeah, exactly. This movie needed to commit to that. Mm -hmm. This movie was holding back, trying to be a real movie, which it couldn't be. It needed to go over the top and be crazy. And you would have had a better movie because Definitely. it knew what it was. It was self-aware. So more old guys that are dead in the hospital stuff. Yeah, More definitely. of that, yeah. less of like random people in a bar making that face and just walking up to them and tapping them on the shoulder. Yeah. Truth or dare! Yeah, or just dumb characters that you don't like. They're stupid college kids that use Snapchat too much. And the other thing is you could tell that the writers were like, well, we can't actually make this movie unless we change the rules about Truth or Dare because otherwise everyone would just say truth over and over again and get into some awkward situations. We have to have them be forced in some way to say dare. Mm -hmm. So you can only say truth so many times before someone else has to say a dare, which is like this rule they just throw in there for fun. I Halfway guess. through the movie. All in all, Truth or Dare is awful uh, and terrible in every way, but really what were you expecting? It's, you know, it's a movie about Truth or Dare where, where kids get together and the game Truth or Dare is haunted by a demon. So... Yeah. In that aspect, the movie was actually pretty good. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was bad. I'll definitely watch it again, though, in, at a party with the right people, and I'm like, you, you just enjoy this film, because <laughs> it, in a lot of ways, you'll laugh. I don't want to watch it ever again. <laughs> I, I won't would, invite you. <laughs> I, and I would be there, obviously, but I would rather watch... Bye bye man yeah. before this because of the one scene where the, the lady dies while driving down the road. <laughs> Please insert a clip. So John, what would you give Truth or Dare? An F? Yeah, yeah. an F. It's it's a terrible movie. It was made as a cash grab for the hopes of getting underage kids to watch a bad movie. But yet, they will connect with it because the characters use social media and Snapchat, mm. and that's cultural references. And I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I'd give it an F as well. It's really fucking bad. But holy shit, I laughed my ass off. So, I mean, this is my first ever new release that I just decided to go straight to hilariosity mode because uh, I think it deserves it. Um... Maybe see it one day on Netflix, or if it's free on Amazon Prime, uh, please don't waste your money at the theater because then we might get another one. That being said, I wouldn't mind a sequel to see what happens with this uh, curse spread throughout the populace. I would like to see that as well. I'm curious how that plays out. That's what I want to know. Well, guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching this review, and thank you to my buddy John for doing this review with me. You can check out his channel below. Please do check it out. You guys are the best, and as always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.